Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to another book review. I'm your host, Logan Albright, and today I'm talking about the William Faulkner 1931 novel, Sanctuary. I have it here in my Library of America edition of novels 1930 to 1935, including As I Lay Dying, Sanctuary, Light in August, Light in August and Pylon. I've read the first three of these. I have not yet read Pylon, which I plan to get to very soon. Um, I was sort of slow coming to appreciate Faulkner. I started to read a couple of his short stories, first of all, and didn't really respond to them. And then I read uh, Light in August, which I liked okay, but wasn't totally crazy about. Uh, then I read As I Lay Dying, which I thought was really funny and really good. And so I kind of became hooked on him after that. <clears throat> and so Sanctuary is the third novel of his that I've read, and the fourth if you count the short story collection that I read before that. And I really liked Sanctuary, too. I think Sanctuary is very good, but it's a very uh, brutal novel. And this is a book that uh, Faulkner wrote fairly early in his career, and he said that he wrote it as a very mercenary way of trying to make money as a writer. He was frustrated with not making any money, and he's like, I'm just going to write something that'll sell. I don't care what it is. I just have to like hit the popular trends and do what's selling, and that's how I'll make money. So he has kind of a negative retrospective opinion of it, but I don't think that's fair at all. I think it's actually a great book and uh, really worthy as a piece of literature. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about it. So the plot of Sanctuary is basically uh, takes place during the 1920s in the Prohibition era in Mississippi, like most of Faulkner's novels do. And it involves this young girl, 18-year-old girl named Temple Drake, just off to college, kind of from a wealthy family. Her father's a judge, um, but she fancies herself a bit wild, a bit adventurous. She likes to go out and, you know, dabble in, in the wildlife a little bit. And she goes to dances with these boys, and she ends up going out with this guy who turns out to be an alcoholic, and he ends up... Uh, stranding her at this bootlegger's house out in the country. And uh, the bootlegger is hanging around all these unsavory characters, and there's this evil gangster there named Popeye. And it's a little hard to take a gangster named Popeye seriously because of the cartoons, but, you know, he's a very, very bad customer. And Temple Drake kind of gets stuck out there. And uh, the one of the women who lives there gives her this long lecture, and it's like, which I thought was really a, a good part of the book, where she's saying, you know, you, you think this is all fun and games. You want to play with these bad people. Um, nobody invited you out here, but you came out here uninvited, you're eating our food, you're sleeping in our beds, and now you're scared and you want to go home and you won't expect us to help you. And it's like, take some responsibility for your life. And, you know, I, I guess you could view that as sort of victim blaming in a sense, and I, but I think that it's sort of a good point. You know, it's, cert certainly Temple Drake doesn't deserve what happens to her. It's horrible. Um, she's definitely a victim in that sense. But I think the point of like, these stupid kids who think it'd be fun to play with dangerous people and then get in over their heads. That's a really bad thing to do is a worthy point to make. And so I like that part of the book. Anyway, um, Temple Drake has very bad things happen to her and she ends up being kind of imprisoned in this brothel in Memphis by Popeye. And she's just totally broken as a character as a result of this. And while this is going on, there's a lawyer named uh, Horace who is, um, he kind of finds out about her case and he, there's a murder that happens at the bootlegger's house, and he's representing the the uh, defendant, who actually is innocent, and he's trying to take care of that. And so these are the kind of two parallel stories that intersect throughout the course of the novel. It's an extremely brutal story. It's really rough. Like, a lot of horrible things happen in it. Um, and I think that's part of what makes it powerful, and it's a little sickening in parts. Um, but it's it's got all these different elements of these kind of novels of the 30s in it. It really kind of feels like a little bit of a crime pulp, you know, it feels a little bit like a detective novel. It feels a little bit like a courtroom drama towards the end. It's got all these genres mixed in together. It actually really reminds me of a novel by Dashiell Hammett called Red Harvest, which is my favorite Dashiell Hammett novel. And if you haven't read it, you should absolutely read it because the Maltese Falcon is his most famous, but Red Harvest is just amazing. It's so, it, it reminds me of it in the sense of how brut brutal it is and how just vicious it is. And I think that that is a fantastic book. And it reminded me of this one because of the similar tone in it, just the darkness of it. You don't often see books that are this dark and this, this evil. Um, so that was interesting. And it also reminds me a little bit of the works of Edgar Allan Poe, which is a little bit of a strange thing to say. But Faulkner is often described as a Southern Gothic writer, his style. And I really feel that in this one. Like, this is a really dark novel and it's like you it has this atmosphere of the gothic around it there's all these decaying mansions in the south and there's all these like creepy forest and vines and you know there's this atmosphere of menace that just hangs over everything everything has violence working lurking behind it everything is just threatening throughout the whole book and I, that really feels gothic to me so i really felt a little bit of the influence of poe there even though it's a completely different style from like the kind of books that poe was writing it really does have that gothic atmosphere to it. So I really liked that. And I liked all those different influences from 
the detective novels and the crime novels and the courtroom dramas and all that. Really good. Uh, there's also, you know, various kind of moral themes in the book, as Faulkner is, tends to do. There's a there's an undercurrent of kind of the hypocrisy of Christian charity in there that I thought was really interesting, where, you know, the, the lawyer is trying to help um, this this uh, bootlegger who has been accused of a crime and his wife, and he's trying to, like, house the wife while the husband's in jail and deal with that. And all these, like, good society Christian women who go to church every day are like, don't bring her here. Like, you know, this is a woman who really needs help. She's in bad shape. She really needs to be taken care of while her husband's in jail. And they're like, don't bring her here. If we, if they saw if my neighbors and friends saw a woman like that in my house, my reputation would never recover. Don't do that. Get her away from me. We don't want her near us. And so it's like, it just shows you the shallowness and the, the, the quickness with which that kind of charitable instinct evaporates as soon as it, you know, has the effect of impacting someone's reputation or making them look bad in front of the people they care about. And that really struck me as a major theme of the book too. And then there's just the, the tragedy of Temple Drake and how her kind of whole life is destroyed over the course of uh, this one incident, this one bad night. And, you know, she has a, a really, really mentally destroyed atmosphere after that. She ends up turning to drink and becomes super alcoholic and, uh, you know, just like basically is, is zombied out the whole time, doesn't really communicate in a, in a normal way anymore because she's been so traumatized. So, like I said, a really dark, really savage, really brutal book. I think Faulkner is a great writer. He's a little difficult to get into, I think. His style is a little disorienting. Like, he leaves out a lot of detail. Um, you kind of have to fill in the gaps yourself. Like, I always find it a little difficult to get oriented at the beginning of a Faulkner novel. You have to get two or three chapters in before you can really figure out what's going on because he doesn't spell out the uh, the events for you. He just kind of drops you into the what's going on, and there's a lot of, you know, circumstantial knowledge you kind of need to have to be able to piece together what's going on and there's all this slang and there's all this kind of dialect writing that he engages in and I find it a little bit challenging to get into it but once you do get into it and you kind of get used to his rhythm of writing it's not that hard to, to read it's not that difficult um, the nice thing about the Library of America edition of course is that there's all these notes in the back that kind of give you some explanations of some of the more dated terms and some of the uh, the specific references that you may not, not otherwise get if you didn't grow up in Mississippi in the 1930s or 20s which I didn't it may surprise you to learn but I really liked it, and I'm looking forward to reading more Faulkner. There's one more in this one pylon, which I'm going to get to pretty soon. And then I'll probably get another. Uh, there's like three other volumes of Faulkner novels uh, issued by the Library of America. So I'll probably get another one of those and read some more of them because I think he's a really interesting writer. Um, of course, race is always a factor in these books. Um, it's not so much in this one. And Light in August was very much about race, but uh, this one is not really about race. But there's there's elements of it because you can't get away from it in uh, 1930s, 1920s Mississippi. It's just there. And, you know, a lot of people object to these kind of books because they use very contemporary racial language when dealing with these things, the, the way people would have talked in 1920s Mississippi about black people, essentially. And it's very offensive. But I think it's good that it's offensive because it's, it's trying to paint this picture of what this life is like, and it's not a flattering picture at all. It's a very unflattering picture of how bad things were in that time and that place and how cruel people were to each other and how unfairly they treated each other. And I think that that's you know, important to write about and important to read about in the 20th century, almost 100 years later, uh, 21st century, I should say, almost 100 years later. Um, I think it's important to read about that stuff. And it's there's this urge to kind of want to whitewash it and pretend that that stuff never happened. And it's like, no, I think you need to, to address it. And that doesn't mean censoring books because they have offensive language in them. You need to realize, like, I was really sh shocked when I read Light in August and I found, you know, like, people talk about Huckleberry Finn and wanting to censor that all the time. Like, Light in August is so shocking compared to Huckleberry Finn. And But I, I think it's good that it shocks people because they realize, wow, I didn't I didn't understand how awful it was back then. And if anybody is in a position to know that and speak from experience, it's William Faulkner who grew up in that atmosphere his whole life. So um, I really think this, these kind of books are important to read in the modern period. And I think that we shouldn't shy away from them just because they have offensive language in them. It's a little bit uncomfortable sometimes, but you know, it's good to be uncomfortable sometimes. So that's basically what I have to say about um, Sanctuary by William Faulkner. It was made into a couple movies, which I haven't seen, but I think it's a difficult book to adapt just because of how, how violent and how, how brutal it is. Um, I don't know that I'd really enjoy watching a film adaptation of it. Um, but I really enjoyed the book, and I thought it was, it was you know, affecting in a lot of different ways, and it made you think. 
Uh, and so I'm looking forward to reading more of his books. I'd love to know what you think. If you've read Sanctuary or any other Faulkner novels, which ones I should get to next after Pylon, please leave me comments in the comments section down there. And if you like this video and this review, please leave me a like for the video. Please subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate that. And I will come back to you just as soon as I can with another book review. I'm traveling next week, so I may not get one out next week. Um, I have to read another book, so we'll see. But I will get you one as soon as I can, and hopefully uh, that will be very soon. So thanks so much for watching. I've been your host, Logan Albright, and I'll catch you next time.